Okay, just a um, little video on how I select a cleft for people and a little bit on how I start all the process off really but um, I've been asked how I go about selecting a particular cleft for a particular customer so we'll just go through that but we'll go from the start of how we how I start it all so this is a, how the cleft arrives this one's a butterfly See the ends of wax there that's to stop the timber splitting when it's drying out when, the, when they're drying it it's in the kiln a little bit when they finish finish it with a bit of kiln drying it stops it splitting lengthways so that's how they arrive so then we clean them up so we clean this up it's a lovely looking cleft this one so it's just roughly cleaned it's not taken I, I don't take them right down to width for my initial shaping they're a bit wider um, it's just the way I like to work I like to have a bit bit more in there than I need really when I'm working it so so we get it to that stage and then we have to shape the profile on the face of the press of the roller on the press. I'll try and do this without knocking everything off when I put you back up. So that's the press. You can see that? Try and get it. There we go. The roller. So that's the press. So that shape there, let's just get a pencil. So that shape there has to correspond with the roller on the press. So you get an even pressure when you press it. Otherwise you get the outside edge being pressed more than the, the middle. Okay, so that's, that's a few runs through there till I get it to the feel that I want. Each cleft's different, takes different amounts of run throughs on the, on the press. So at that point then, we've got to choose which end we want the handling. So not only are we looking to try and get the best part of the willow for its face, but we're looking which end the grain runs better on. So I want a nice straight grain through the toe of the bat. So on this one, that would be the end that the handle goes in. There's not that much between them, but there's just a bit. So we take the surplus wood off the back, splice it, put the splice in, ready for the handle. There are our handles. So they arrive to me. There we go. So we make the male part of the splice to correspond with the female part of the splice and the cleft. Then once that's a nice fit, we measure up, cut the shoulders in to length, and then glue them up and then we clamp it. I know it's um, one of the major, I'm not going to name names, but one of the major back companies when they send clefts out to a lot of uh, back companies who shape bats up, they don't do all the pressing or handling themselves, they have them done for them. They put, you see them quite a bit actually, they have like a, a thick rubber band around the top. I just use these clamps, okay? I'm not churning thousands out, so I, they need loads of clamps, so I, I don't. So I've probably got a dozen of these clamps up there. So I do a few at a time, as the rack needs uh, filling up. That's, that's what I do. 
So they get to that stage, clamp comes off, they go in the press again. Now they go in the press again to get the feel and the sound that I'm after. So there's the ball. So once they've been in the press to, to get that final touch, I keep having a test part way through to get that that feel that I want. Every bat maker is going to be different the way they do it and, and look for a different thing but that's the principle. You want that sound. I've just picked this out for someone actually. This one is one of the ones we had on the video yesterday. So that's the gentle bow that we put in. You see that? So we get a load made up, so they go in the rack. So we've got a rack. Pick that up for you. So there's a rack there with about 30, 30 bats in, 25, 30 bats handled up, ready to make. So if anyone comes to the little workshop to pick a cleft out, they can wade through all those, pick out what they want. I decide, have a final look at it and decide whether it just needs another run through the press or not. Because sometimes I think when they sit there, they just relax a little bit sometimes and it doesn't hurt them to have another run through the press. So we'll then look at when I pick a bat out. So um, this chap wants a bat at uh, a player's grade at 211. So pick this one out, it's 39. So I know I'm going to take a pound out comfortably. So that takes it down to 29. Then grip it around that mark, so 2 9, then we grip it up and it takes it up to around the 2 11 mark. I know what I like to take out of a bat. You could take more, more than a pound out, I reckon, but it would be detrimental to the, to the performance of it. So that's how, just a quick run through of how we go through the process of selecting a bat for someone. Everyone is the same, whether it's butterfly through to player's grade. Everything is still done meticulously, the same way. And, uh, and then we shape them up. In fact, here's one that we've... Uh, the binding's just dried, actually. That's a velocity for a, an old mate of mine, actually, who been a good cricketer in his time. He's come to... Um, have one made up. That's uh, going to finish at 2.9 that. It's a nice bat. So, and that's, that's ready to be gripped and stick it up. Simple as that. Okay, well, hopefully we'll uh, speak to one or two of you soon, and uh, hope that's enlightened you a little bit.